Hey guys, this is Nick Christopher from Mob Tales. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Um, please like, subscribe, and share. We definitely appreciate that as our subscriber base is growing. Uh, today I have a very interesting guest, uh, Roger Fisher. Uh, he's he's done. I, mean, I don't talk to, it's too many things for me to mention. I think. Um, so, uh, no further ado, uh, Raj, thanks a lot for coming on. I definitely appreciate it. I don't make Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you now. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> nice um, to be on your show. If I, I've read a lot about you and everything. I've been keeping up with you. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> well, it is good because I know some of the people you, you interviewed, though. Uh, like I said, like I spoke to you before and uh, yeah. also you tell me, you know, Spiro Valenza, which is... He was a big part of my life. And uh, yeah, that's, that's something I'm very interested in <laughs> to begin with. Uh, but I want to get the, the audience a little familiar with what you've done and the kind of work you do. Um, Raj has been involved in a lot of different aspects of business, uh, uh, from starting a uh, opening a pizzeria, I believe, because you love pizza so much, yeah. uh, to going into getting involved in film and uh, different aspects of the, of the entertainment business. So, um, and, and an author as well, uh, which we're going to talk to discuss about the cocktail heat. Uh, so uh, maybe you could give us a little bit of a breakdown from your time, because I know you spent some time in, in New York, and then you uh, moved out to Florida, I believe. Um, maybe you can give us a little bit of a, a history lesson. Well, I mean, I started, you know, you know, I grew up in West Virginia, and uh, I mean, it's a long, my, my life is a long story. We don't have that much time, though. Maybe I'll tell in the book later, but, uh, you know, I met Spiro the Greek, you know, Spiro is supposed to be the godfather of the Greek, and a lot of people don't really not realize how big the Greek mafia is. It's very, very big, but Spiro, whether he's the boss or not, I don't, I don't think so. I don't, you know, Spiro's like a grandfather. He's a businessman. He's like 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 a Joe Watts. You ever heard of Joe Watts? Yeah. I know Joe Watts. So oh, Joe's a businessman. It's just who he's associated with, and it gives him a name of the mafia. You understand? And mm -hmm. everybody can say Joe Watts is a mob guy. He, he's not. He's not. He's a big businessman. He's just like me. I got I got signed as as, as mob associate. And I got smacked around by the FBI. I literally smacked around, beat up, trying to get me to talk, which I don't know anything. You know, I, I was held four and a half hours in, in Midtown Manhattan with my hands tied behind my back tight. I smacked around because they put folders in front of me. Yeah, I know this. They got pictures of me with Johnny Gamarano coming out of uh, Giovanni's Atrium and a restaurant in Manhattan. I don't think it's mm -hmm. there anymore. But Johnny G is another person who who I clung to that was, you know, I never knew he was mob associated. These people don't tell me. They don't, they don't talk about their life or what they've done. You know, they're, to me, they're business guys. But for the people I've been around, I've been around a lot of big people, you know, uh, um, Mickey Generoso. He actually kicked me out of his restaurant in Manhattan because he says, I don't want you around me, kid, because you're going to prison just because you're seeing me here. So I understood what he means. He says, I love you but I don't want to see you anymore. No it was a love thing. It wasn't, it wasn't, he was mean. He was protecting me. He says he never wants to see me again. Now that, that meant a lot to me. That was powerful to me. I didn't take it offensive at all. He just, I just don't want to see you no more. When you walk out that door, don't look back. Cause I don't want to see you in prison for the rest of your life because you said hello to me. So kind of hurt, but it, it helped me in my life. Now I realize why I can't go around with some of these people because the feds will put you in that category and category you as a mob guy and you're not and they'll do what they can to tear you down to get you to know something to talk I don't know anything that's why I got smacked around by the feds um he's a big he was he's was in a, a book um I don't remember his name he was a big guy he's the one that came in he was an FBI agent who was the head of the, the, the organized crime task force. He's the one who had all the folders and everything. He told me who he was, you know, whoever he gets, whoever he gets in his sights, he gets. They're in prison or dead, one or the other. So it didn't scare me. I told him F off. 
you know, I talked bad about his mother. I got smacked around because I really didn't know nothing. You know what I mean? Well, I'm going to tell him anyway. I wouldn't have told him anything anyway because I did my time. I did federal time. I could have told on these guys. I didn't. I did eight and a half years. Eight and a half years for a dumb crime. But I did it. I took it. I took it over the chin and I did my time. But you know what? My life turned out better when I got out. It did. I was more powerful in my own way. I was smarter. I was a lot smarter. Then I started meeting uh, Jack Stella. Jack Stella is a very good friend of mine. He's not associated with no, no mafia at all, but he's a businessman. He's one of the most intelligent people I've ever met. And I've learned a lot from him. That's why I've, I've had a lot of my businesses because of him. And I got my start through Spiro the Greek. He, he brought me out of the hills of West Virginia. And it's because of him that I had got a foundation in, 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 in New York. And I got to say my success comes from Spiro and never okay. asks for nothing, nothing, nothing from me. You know, he's got, he's still got a lot of power on the street. He could do anything for me, but I didn't ever ask him for anything. He's never reached out for me. He's not, he didn't have to. I learned from him. I learned the business, the way to approach things and stuff. So I learned a lot from him. And then I got uh, Johnny Gamarano. He was the, the Gambino guy. He passed away. He's very, he was, he was like a, he was very close to me and he's the one who associated me with, with some other people, non-associated mob. He introduced me to some big people. So I got to know them and that's, that's how my, my business career started off was through the mafia, really. You know what I mean? But it's not, I'm not associated. I'm really not. I don't go talking about nothing with these guys about criminal activity. And you know, they wouldn't need, you know, that they don't talk about that with me. I'm not associated, but they're, they're not stupid. But that's well, what we. That's what happens to us. Well, maybe you can give us a little bit about. I know you mentioned about how much uh, Spiro and, and, and John Johnny G gave you some guidance and, and some uh, knowledge uh, to help you with in, in business. Um, can you give us a couple of bullet points of what they exactly? How did they guide you in that in that respect? Well, I've learned from them from the businesses they had before. And, uh, you know, Spiro's always talking about uh, his, his restaurants, his, his, what we, he had gambling, but you, mm -hmm. it's still the same thing as a business as illegal and legal. You put the same sense into it. And most of my business come from Johnny G, uh, uh, several people. I mean, I've got billionaires. I mean, I've, I've been in business with one billionaire, which actually got kicked out of my own company. <laughs> it was, it's a long story, but, uh, yeah, I diluted my shares and I lost control, but it was, it, it's, it's a lesson learned and I've, uh, I will never dilute my shares ever again. It's just a lesson you learn in life. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I mean, I'm not rich and I'm like that. I'm, I'm doing well. And hopefully in the future I get better because I've, I've been a millionaire twice and I got knocked down uh, because of, of the people that I know. But I just take it on the chin and I get right back up. Thanks for my wife. You know, my wife is, is there for me no matter what she knows. And you know, she was there when I got, when I got hit by the feds, uh, they, they said that I had assaulted a, a high, highly decorated police officer, a pistol whipped him. Well, first of all, he pistol whipped me and he, but he said, I took the gun from him and I tried to shoot him the gun went off, which, which was not true. Thank God the prosecutor saw the light of day. So I didn't do no time, but I got violated for probation violation of the feds. You just see what happened. Now, uh, Vinny Rotondo from the, I think he's the New York Times now, but he investigated all the way from California to New York for my family. And he, he dug up where the FBI came in and took the tapes. The security would have proved that I told the truth. Disappeared. They disappeared. So this guy saved me too from saying that I wasn't lying when I said I'd never touched this cop. I, I hit him. Yeah, I did hit him, but I didn't know he was a cop because he's got, he's pulling out a gun, smacking on my window, telling me to get out of the car. So a pizza, a pizza van came out. I was set up. I was going to see a mob guy. I was going to see him. He asked me to come into his restaurant in Manhattan, but not nothing illegal. He wanted me to look at his cabinets in his re restaurant. So they knew I was coming around because he told me, don't go around this way because there's a parade. Go around the other way. So all of a sudden I get there. I got my wife with me. A van comes out of nowhere. It's a pizza van. 
red, it was an Italian collars, red, green, and white. Came out of nowhere and sides white me. So I was, I'm trying to get the license plate, trying to find this first. Well, all of a sudden, these cops come out of nowhere, un, unmarked, guns everywhere. So this guy, his gun goes off when he hits my window. The gun goes off. And it could have went through my head, went through, went through the windshield. But it happened so fast, they put my wife on the ground, me on the ground. Of course, they messed me up, you know. But, uh, they said there was no van. There was never no van. I mean, my wife saved me, too, because my wife said the same exact thing that happened that I did. There's no way you can say, plan anything that within that second. Say, hey, tell them there's a van come out. There's no possible way. She said what I said. That's why the prosecutor saw some bullshit. So, wow. but I still want to go with it. Like, oh, well, plead guilty to this. I, you know, I didn't want to face life in prison for attempted murder on a high de highly decorated DA agent. He was a DA agent. Well, he was there, I have no idea. I've never been involved with drugs in my life. I don't even do drugs. I don't even drink in my life. I mean, I, wine, that's about it. But, oh, uh, it was, it was just a whole setup just to get me and that's when they brought me up to the to the midtown met where uh, the organized crime task force was in there and slapped me around they wanted information they set me up for that but they got me on the violation i, I did have to plead guilty but the uh, thing is it was 9 11 so at the attorneys that i had i had a pretty big attorney the attorney said listen here's the deal i believe you i know you're telling the truth so as a prosecutor we know that, that you're telling the truth but it's 9 11 no matter what evidence you have the public's going to go with the heroes of 9-11. The cops are heroes, no matter what you do, no matter how evidence you got. You're going to take a chance of going to trial, and you're going to lose. He said, I recommend you just take a plea. You don't do no more time, and they violate you. That's it. I said, you know what? I'll go with it because I believed him. I believed him. I mean, I could have took it to trial, but I could also lose and do 25 to life in prison. So I took it over the chin, but thank God Vinny Rotondo came along and saw, he went to my pizzeria and, and, and saw what I've done. I, I owned a lot of stuff in Red Hook, Brooklyn. Me and my, my partner, we were starting to buy up a lot of stuff. We owned the pizza place, chemical company, laundromat. So we started buying up a lot of stuff. So we started well known there. And he just wanted to know how I started. He knew I came from a small town in West Virginia. That's how that started, that he had started investigating and Thank God that he came back and said, Roger, you know, for a minute there, I thought you was lying about this, lying about that, lying about this. He said, seems like I just can't catch you in a lie. And he wrote that. He wrote that in the newspaper. It's still there today, if you look at it. So these so these officers didn't have any probable cause. This is just assumptions that you were connected or something. No, and I'm not connected. I just know, you know, if you, if you grew up in Brooklyn, you know mafia guys. Just because you know them don't mean you're associated. You know, it's, but that's the bad part, what the feds do. The feds will tear you down and take away your life. Hopefully you'll work with them and get in there with them. That's what they wanted me to do. They never said that. They never said, we want you to work with it. But I knew what they wanted. They wanted me to just break down, start crying, say, please, just let me go and I'll help you. I'll get whatever you need. No, I mean, I cursed their mother. I, I'm, you know, I wanted them to keep hitting me. I wasn't, I wanted them just to leave. I wanted to smack me around and leave because it was, it was getting painful, you know, but, but the arm was killing me. My arm is still hurt today because of how they tied me from the back of my hands, my arms. And the other guy came back and he had, he had the biggest hands I, I've known in my life and just smacks me right in the face <laughs> as soon as I said something stupid. But it, it's... So, so it's guilt by friendship. <laughs> yeah, it is, but it hurts, but you know what? It's better than... than turning on some friend that don't deserve it. One of those to make up lies and, and then, then turn them in. They go to prison for life and here I am. What do I get? Nothing. Good point. I mean, uh, now, today, now today you can be a rat and nobody, nobody worries about it. You know, uh, nobody cares about any rats no more. So it's dangerous today. Very dangerous. Yeah. Uh, well, that, that all this experience and, and knowledge that you gathered over these years obviously led you to you know um dip into the entertainment business and one of them is of obviously authoring a book called cartel heat um maybe you can give us a little bit of uh, background on that and about the car where they got everybody signing that looks so cool 
Maybe oh, the maybe cartel maybe heat bar, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit info on that. Well, that's on my marketing side. You know, I'm a good marketer. When I've had business, I do a lot of work. You got to spend money to do marketing. And if you don't market it, you're not going to have a business. That's that's straight out. Yeah, like uh, Bill yeah. Gates said, if he had one dollar, he lost everything. He spent that dollar on advertising. So that tells you 100%. Just go broke if you have to, but use that money. And that's what I've been doing. All my money's going into marketing right now. So the cartel heat car is... It's going around the United States, and, and people can sign it to uh, put it on social media and everything. Like Then they go to the website. I get probably 4,000 hits a week on what – I don't know if it's coming from the car. I don't know. You don't know. It says direct. I don't know how to, to look at that. I have, some, I have a host doing that for me. But we get a lot of response. You know, people get mad because they don't stop, you know, to sign the car. We get, I get cursed out personally. I get an email threatening me. I get, I mean, you know, I make it a joke. You know what I mean? I said, I'm sorry. I, if I was, if I'm driving the car, I'm going to pull over. I don't care who you got. You can have, you know, four big dudes in the car. I'm going to pull over and let you sign the car. I don't discriminate. But if a, if a girl is driving, I got a young girl driving sometimes too. I don't expect her to pull over some guys in the car somewhere, you know, but they got to understand that. But uh, that's the marketing. I'm doing also a party in Miami and November the 18th, uh, I'm going to have a lot of celebrities. I know a lot of celebrities, musicians, music producers. I, I own Regulate Records back in New York back in 2010. And uh, I've been in every business known to life, uh, clothing business. But um, I know a lot of people, and I got some people coming. I got special guests I can't advertise yet until they say, yes, I'll be a special guest. Um, I believe I do have somebody right now. He is the uh, Mob King director of the movie Mob King. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, I don't really know him personally, so I contacted him. I said, would you like to come to the party? He said, yeah. I said, well, I loved your movie. And you know, it was a great movie. He did an awesome job. I'm very proud of him. Um, he, he's going to be there, but I'm going to ask him to be a special guest. I know he will. And, uh, Tony Bon Jovi, John uh, Bon jo Bon Jovi's uh, cousin and founder of the Bon Jovi band. Uh, whether he's going to be a special guest, I don't know, but he's a very good friend. He'll do anything for me. He comes to my birthday parties, too. Um, yeah, you've, done, uh, you've, done some, you've done some work with him, correct? Yeah, yeah I worked for Tony Bon Jovi on a, a reality show, um, not no music, but reality show production. He's mm -hmm. doing a he's doing a he's doing a movie right now. I don't know what it is right now. It's I think it's an animation for Christmas, Christmas animation. He's uh, looking for investors now, so he's on the investor side right now. But it's it's interesting though. But I'm not involved in that. I used to be, but I got out of that because I I'm doing my own thing and I can't keep working for people. And but Tony's like a brother to me. He'll do anything for me. I actually met Tony Bon Jovi back in Sony Music 19. Oh, I can't remember. But he actually remembered. He actually <laughs> remembered. But uh, when I first met him, he says he does remember. But uh, he's a good guy. He's he's helped me out a lot in the industry. Now, if I was in the music business, I'd be okay. But I don't need the music business now but he's in the production too now he's also a good inventor he's uh, invented a lot of stuff actually for for sound and everything he's a sound engineer he's got his music in airplanes private jets and everything right now wow okay well but, you know, uh, I guess, you know, tell us a little bit more about cartel heat about the book the book is going to be out november the 18th um it's it's the mafia the new york mob guy that meets the in the federal prison of the cartel boss uh, from Mexico. He's actually born in Colombia, but he was moved to Mexico after the Escobar and stuff uh, problem. And then they, and the, the Mexican cartel moved him to Miami to take over. But he ended up in federal prison eight years. He did eight years. Though, so the, the mafia guy did eight years. So it was bunkies. They got to know each other and they said, well, you know, he said, you want to make a lot of money? You don't make money being a mob guy. You're killing. He said, come with me. I'll make you a million dollars a day. So that's what they did. They, they got together in Miami when they got out of prison. And this it's nothing but body bags. It went wrong. They ain't just making money. They're killing more than they're making money. It's life. It's really life. It's not, you know, that kind of business is, is murder. Yeah. You got to kill a lot of people. They got to take over their, 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 their territory, just like you had to do. You know, when a, a big guy goes to prison, you lose power. You get back out, you got to take over the power again. And that's bodies. People disappear, chopped up. And it's called John the Butcher, which I take from 
a friend of mine, you know, it's his real life, but it, I can't mention his name. And he got a lot of bodies. He's killed a lot of people. Uh, you know him too. I, I mentioned it to you. I don't want to mention his name on here, but he is, he's, he's a dedication to the character really. And he's a really good guy. He would not hurt you for nothing. He wouldn't, you know, that he wouldn't, if he, if he wouldn't kill a woman for no money or an innocent person, if it's mafia associated, he would have done it for his boss, but he is one of the person you want to be beside you in life because he would never hurt you ever. Yeah. He's so a very, very good, very good so friend the book, of mine. The book is based on true events. It is based on true events. I actually know a, a cartel guy. I'm actually good friends with El Chapo cousin, which is a, uh, He's a movie producer. He's not associated with El Chapo. He's on the good side. He's done, oh my God, he's done like, like 600 movies in Mexico. Um, I hooked up with him and I'm going to be partners with him and Cartel Heat, the, the film, hopefully next year. So we're working out the deal right now to do the, the TV series in Miami. I want, to, I want to produce it in Miami, even though it's probably a little more expensive. But Miami, you're going to get that feel in Miami because it's going to be like a Sopranos but in the cartel sense in Miami, it is mafia. It's the mafia, the, the mob guys got their crew, and then the cartel guys got their crew. But they're they're working together. But you know they don't get along. They don't trust each other. You know that's it's untrustable. So <laughs> well, the guys get knocked off left and right. But uh, it, it's life. But it's a good book. I can't wait to write the second one. I believe this one's going to be pretty uh, pretty good. Um, like I said, I did a lot of marketing, and everybody's read the book. Loved it. They want to wait for the, the second one. So I got a lot of views of reviews of my personal people. And some of them are honest. They told me to change things, which I didn't. I just don't feel the change is necessary. Man, my co my co-writer is, is uh, Debbie Vigay, New York Times bestseller with Wicked, and got over 60 books in print. Now she was, I went, you know, I needed somebody with credibility with writing. I'm not a I'm not a book writer, I'm a movie writer. So it's it's totally different it's apples yeah. to orange apples to orange so i said well let me contact some book writers from new york times i'm sure they'll tell me no but at least i'll get some kind of information first one i went to was debbie she loved it but i thought she's going to come back and say i'm not interested but no she loved it she took it on you know i made her an offer she couldn't refuse you know what they say <laughs> without violence or without threats but uh, she's great uh, i'll become friends with her and, and uh Dr. Vigay, and uh, we're like family now. You know, I, when I go to Florida, I take him out to dinner, the, my appreciation, because he does a lot for me. But we collaborated with the but with the script, the movie script that I had, made it into the book. Um, now, the reason why I made it to a book, because my publicist, uh, Lila Fazio, she, well, she passed away uh, last year, uh, rest in peace. Um, she was Steven Spielberg's publicist before me. And she retired and I brought her out of retirement. I, I, I begged her really, um, but because I needed her her connection and her, her experience. But she she loved my life story and she says I'll I'll do it for almost nothing. She wasn't really charging me a lot of money for someone like that. She was just wanted to see me, you know, blow up in the industry. She was she'd done everything for me and she, I was very close to her. She said, Roger let's make this book into a book before you make it into a movie. Cause I, she says, I could do a lot more. So I said, all right, but I'm not, a, I'm not a book writer. She says, well, you wrote a movie, you can write a book. Well, she's wrong, but I could probably, I could probably write the book. I don't have time, Nick. I don't have time to sit down and do all these things. I'm, I got so much I'm doing. I'm still working and I'm still doing all my projects and I have a lot on the table. So that's why I had to go to Debbie Vigay and hopefully she would uh, at least give me somebody if she didn't, but she took on the, the project and she's been great. You know, she, I've learned a lot from her in writing. I learned a lot. So she's well, been out, great. Well, outside of Cartel Heat, I mean, you said, I know you said you're involved in a bunch of things. Um, outside of that, is there um, anything else you would like to add in, in reference to other projects you may be working on that you would, you would like people to know about? But, well, I can't talk about many because, you know, if they, if they don't come to light, you, you, don't, you didn't want to mention it. You know what I mean? So right now it's on the table. And right now it's hard to get investors, especially right now. 
No kidding. <laughs> yeah, it's very hard, even 80,000. You know, you think 80,000, you can get that with, with what you've done in your life. and But no, it's, it's hard because you got to be creative of taxes. If you tell an investor, okay, listen, you're going to get your money back because of taxes, they're going to do it. But now they change the tax structure in film. The 181 is not like it used to be. That's that's why all these big directors and producers got so big back 10, 15 years ago because they got 100% of the money back. Uh, the investors, no matter what happened, they got their money back. Now it's, it's much easier. It's much harder for us guys, especially the independents, mm -hmm. even to sell it to a major. You know, we got we got to do a lot just to sell it to a major. We have to spend probably a hundred thousand just to get it to a major. You just don't submit your stuff to a major like these people tell you. Oh, you'll get the movie. This don't know. You're gonna spend a hundred thousand pitching that to a major, at least a hundred grand. Attorneys, attorneys, your number one. Your publicist is your number two. If you don't have either one, you're not going to get a major. And it's yeah. good to be connected to to CAA and in, in California, uh, Beverly Hills. If you're not connected to them, it's 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 much harder. You got to right. have. Oh, you know, things have changed a little bit now with the writers' strike and everything. Uh, in the indie, I think the indie indie market, uh, guys like you and I, I think we're gaining some steam and gaining some ground. Where I think. The big studios are going to suffer in the long run, I think. No, I don't think so. No, they'll, they'll never suffer. Uh, their, their structure is set up to not lose. They can't lose. I know the structure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they make, they say they make a movie for $100 million. It doesn't cost them $100 million. It costs them $60 million. It does. <laughs> but it, it, it doesn't cost that money. But... It's the same you do as, as independent. You still have money left over, but that's to, to promote your film film festivals and stuff. Like that. They, do it different. they do it totally different, mm -hmm. uh, way different. So it, it's, it is getting easier for us as independents, but it, you have to have the majors to back you up. You, you have to, you can't, you, you can't become successful filmmaker or producer without the big ones backing you up and distribution because if not then small distributors will rob you you'll never get paid i know one personally and but he passed away he never paid nobody for 30 years never millions of dollars one day one time he's worth 200 million dollars at one time he never paid i, I don't want to say that because i know them personally so, you know big actors so i don't want to put them on the spot but when i do see them again I, I'm, I'm gonna tell them what i know that they got robbed you know and i'm sure they know it they know the business they just did it on the back end and that's what you don't do you don't do movies on the back end if you're a known celebrity because you're you're not going to get nothing you could do it as a favor to let's say they're friends with me let's say johnny depp's good friends with buddy with me and he does it on the back end he knows he's only doing it to help me mm -hmm. But well, Johnny Depp, you probably he could probably just say hello in the film to make money. But yeah. get an example, you know. But uh, oh, I get you. Yeah. yeah, it's a crazy it, business. No doubt about it. It is, but our our tax structure, we had to be a little more creative, working with the city to get things from the city. And like I tell you, I'm gonna do in Miami. You know, I used to know the mayor Regalado, um, but now it's a new mayor now, which I asked for her blessing to have the party in Miami. Which I don't need her blessing, but I like to have it because I'm I'm also given to Cancer Foundation for kids. Uh, because in the book there is there is messages: cancer awareness, uh, school bullying, uh, crime doesn't pay. There's all kinds of messages in my book. And major was the the I put the cancer in there because my wife had breast cancer twice, but she beat it, and she's good. Okay. You know, so. I'm, you know, I put that in there for that reason to let people know you can be here today, tomorrow you're gone. So, you know, it was John's wife, John the Butcher in the book, his wife, you know, had cancer and he didn't know it for all the time he was in prison. He never knew. He just thought she didn't want, he did, that she didn't want to see him anymore. The whole time she didn't want him to see her like that, being losing weight, skinny, and mm -hmm. he, she didn't want to see him see her that way. Right. With the kid so that was all it's about and that's hard so i put that in there for that reason uh of course crime don't pay because it don't and that's the message 
you know, it's not going to end well. Um, oh. And bullying, stuff like that. School, school bullying is big right now. But, you know, us, our age, we was bullied in school, too. Even tough guys were bullied. Everybody's been bullied in school. Now they take it too far. They're taking it too far. People, kids are killing themselves now, which is terrible. We never killed ourselves. You no. know, we try to, we're trying to plan up when we get older, we're going to knock them out. You know, that's <laughs> what we used to plan. Yeah. Now they, they kill themselves because they can't handle it. It's terrible. You know, a different breed. Totally different breed. Different breed, but it's the parents too. You know, the parents got to step in and, you know, not yeah. violently, but start talking to their kids. You know, that's, that's the problem. But um, the, the party is not just a book signing. It's not your typical everyday book signing. Mine's going to be one extra. It, it's going to be, I don't know. I used to have birthday parties. I used to have celebrities there. I used to have big birthday parties. It's going to be bigger than that. And I've always had a successful one. I never charged nobody. Nobody ever brought, brought a dollar. And I used to threaten them. You bring a, me a gift, you're getting kicked out. This is about spending time with me and saying hello. What I know you are not. You know, it's all, you know, life is about friends, friends mm -hmm. and your family. So I take it, I take friendship serious, very serious. So when I lose a friend, I take it, uh, I take it hard. So I like being around people, I like meeting new people. I'm not, you know, I'm not the type of person that I don't talk to nobody. I talk to everybody. I don't care who you are. I don't talk to you. You could be a gangster, gang bang. I don't care who you are, but you'd be a, I've known serial killers too. You know, of course, you know, I, I was with a couple of serial killers, <laughs> but they're regular people, but I used to talk to them. I didn't, it's not my business what they did in life. Mafia bosses, I don't care what they did in their life. I, I was a terrorist. My deal, A, yeah, the chemical engineer, but the World Trade Center bombing, you know, so I don't, I don't discriminate nobody, but it's nice to have friends that you can reach out and say, hello. I've met a lot of people at my birthday parties. I'm still in contact with today. And one of them's a very good friend of mine who's helped me a lot. So it works out very good. I help him. He helps me. And he's actually on the cover of my book. I've actually got, the, I've got a prop. This is not the exact, the exact one yet. It's been approved, but this is the, uh, that's the cover. It's almost that's like, cool. yeah. So, you know, Jimmy, that's Jimmy. That's, that's, uh, that's Jimmy. He's uh, he owns uh, lasermafia.com. He owns. He's done a lot of stuff for me, in Vero Beach. Um, you know, this is this is Adam, and that's and she's actually a singer. And I have the new one. I have uh, the Mexican actor uh, Barnaby Melenza. He's uh, made over six hundred movies in Mexico and America. He's on there too now. So I added him. The new one. So. Yeah. He, he, yeah, he don't speak English, but he's, you know, <laughs> he's a good person. And he was, when I met him, when I, I shot a trailer in, in Houston, Texas for the book, a book trailer. I went to Houston, Texas, because they had all the, the prop guns and they had it all there, cars and, and production crew. So he was, he came to my hotel and he was, he thought I was Johnny Depp. He said he was honored to meet <laughs> me. I said, oh, man, you got 600 movies under your belt. You're the king, not me. But that's how appreciative these people are. You know, they, they appreciate everything. Wow. But it, it's all, you know, but I want to mention the party. I want everybody to come. All they got to do is go to cartelheat.com and sign up because uh, I need to know how many people's coming. They have to sign up. Uh, right. Catering and stuff I had to have, like the swag bags, whatever I'm going to have there. So definitely the catering. I got to have enough food. I've always ran out of food in my, my birthday parties. It's going in seconds. Cause I didn't know hundreds of people showing up, you know, and they do. And I, I really want to get a thousand people with this one. I want a thousand so people. That, but they, book. I don't care. So the party is around the same time the book is coming out. It's going to be the book release day. Actually, I'm going to be doing my book signing there. I'm going to have, have entertainment and stuff like that. I'm going to have book authors there. Of course, Debbie's going to be there. all the people on the book cover is going to be there as host. Um, I'm going to have a couple of celebrities. Um, I have one big, I have an A-list celebrity who, who said he might come, but I can't publicize it. He doesn't want to be known that he's coming. I can't use this name to get people because it would it would be too many people for me to handle. <laughs> no, so, this is, well, it makes sense. It's good. Yeah, so I respect him for that. And if I have to, I got to get him like a VIP section. He just he just supports me. And uh, oh. after the party, of course, I'll show pictures of, of him if he shows up. He's not guaranteed to show up. 
right. he's coming he's coming from LA. So and I I promised him I'd pay his way, but he he won't let me pay his way. Oh, that's nice of him. But um, I hope, hopefully some of your listeners will come. They're in Miami or whatever. This is going to be it's going to be a blast, man. It'll be a blast. Cool. Um. Well, Roger, look, I, I know our, the, our time is coming up. Uh, I definitely appreciate you coming on. Uh, I'm definitely interested in the book myself, personally. Uh, definitely want to get it and uh, read it, of course. Uh, hopefully, one day we can uh, we can meet in person. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, but I do want to wish you a lot of luck and hope everything works out and that everybody and people can check out uh, your book and everything at the uh, where, where would they go? What, what website would they go? Uh, cartelheat.com. You go cartel. Oh, and all my okay. social media is on there and everything. I got Instagram stuff. So you just go to cartelheat.com, make it simple, and you can see all the Instagram stuff and Facebook stuff on there. I got personal business and I got my publishing company. I just started cave and night publishing.com too. Um, but you go there, you can get on the Facebook page and everything. Cause I'm still, this place here was built for publishing company that I just started. This is temporary right now. So I built this because of the, the, the big publishers like Simon & Schuster that they're partners with the, my publishing company. They're they're bleeders. They will bleed you dry. They don't care about you. So you know what? I'm taking offensive. I'm going to start helping people that can't afford books and, and working out some kind of creative way to they can get their book out. Oh, that's good. We need some more like that. Uh, well, thank you, Roger, once again. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll still stay in touch, of course. I'll see you in New York, Nick. No, sounds good, buddy. Dinner's on me. Thanks, Roger. Nice to meet you, buddy. Take care. Bye. Well, thanks, guys, for tuning in to Nick Christopher's and Mob Tales. Please share, like, and subscribe. See you next time.